Hello Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, Amateur Radio Call Sign KE0OG, and here today with another episode of Ask Dave. Uh, today the question comes from this last Thursday's live stream. Uh, when I was asked to explain what the various uh, uh, indexes and numbers and all that sort of stuff having to do with solar propagation, what all those mean? So we're going to take a look at uh, some uh, things here. I, I want to get the definitions out. Uh, the MUF, or MUF, is the maximum usable frequency. This is the frequency uh, bel uh, above which a signal will hitting the ionosphere will just pass through. Below that number, the signals will be reflected. Now, the muff varies a little bit depending on the angle, if you're going straight up and so on. Uh, but uh, the muff, uh, when propagation is good, the muff goes higher, so we can use higher frequencies for HF communications. The SFI is the Solar Flux Index. Now, this, according to this article here in uh, QST uh, from September 2002 on understanding solar indices. By the way, indices is the plural of index. You could wonder why don't we use indexes. Um, well, in science, people like to use indices as the plural of index. The solar flux is an attempt to measure sunspot activity on the sun. Uh, the problem is that it's hard to count sunspots on cloudy days, you know, all this kind of thing like that. Plus, sunspots vary in size. So, the sunspot number is actually the number of sunspots. But the sunspot number is a little weird because as the sunspot number goes up, the total area of the sun covered by sunspots goes up. Now, some of those sunspots don't shoot their radiation at the Earth, so they don't quite count. So the idea is, to, what scientists really wanted was some sort of a proxy, some, a stand-in, some sort of a stand-in for the sunspot number. And they found that in the Solar Flux Index. The Solar Flux Index comes from a single instrument that is the Penticacon Penticton Radio Observatory in British Columbia, Canada, which reports this number daily. It is the amount of noise at 2800 megahertz, so it's up in the microwave bands, which is the 10.7 uh, centimeter wavelength. So let's see, that's 25 millimeters, I guess 25 centimeters, about 10 centimeters wavelength, about like that, 10.7 uh, centimeters. They have found through study that this number, the solar flux index, is roughly correlated with uh, the sunspot index, which is a measure of the area of the sunspots. So, in other words, it's a measure of solar activity. In periods of low solar activity, there are hardly any sunspots or none. Um, and then it can go up to, of course, uh, to be very, very active. Now, the sunspot number in the suns, uh, uh, the uh, solar flux index are both very tightly uh, uh, bound together, but not real strongly. I mean, not perfectly. Now, the two other numbers, A and K indices, measure not solar activity, but measure the activity of the Earth's geomagnetic field. Okay? Now, uh, the problem with lots of activity in the Earth's geomagnetic field is because the ionosphere is, in fact, ionized, it is very susceptible to the magnetism changes in the Earth's magnetic field. If 
you have lots of magnetic activity in the Earth's magnetic field, it will totally hose the ionosphere. And that creates a radio blackout. Now what creates a geomagnetic storm? Uh, as you know, a bunch of crud and everything comes out from the sun. It's called the solar wind. Okay, it's constantly shedding. Don't worry, it's going to be around for another few million years. Uh, maybe a billion years, I don't know. Um, and all this crud coming out there is captured by the Earth's geomagnetic field. And because the Earth is a big magnet, so it has a magnetic field around it called the geomagnetic field. So here's what happens. Let's look on the overhead. Here is the sun. Sun. No, 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 no. Okay. Here's the earth, which isn't very big. Okay. There is a constant wind coming off of the sun. Charged particles, um, all kinds of stuff, mostly uh, protons, which are charged hydrogen atoms. Uh, or hydrogen nuclei, uh, and so on. Now the Earth, and I'm going to draw this in red here, the Earth has a magnetic field. Now, parts of the Earth's magnetic field are actually kind of swept back a ways, like this, because of the force of the solar wind. Now, there's a steady state to this, okay? And you get a kind of a constant geomagnetic field when you have a steady state of bombardment. But if for some reason the sun decides that it's going to put out a whole bunch of extra stuff, okay, some of this stuff gets captured by the geomagnetic field. This creates auroras, by the way. When you have auroras, there's extra uh, activity in the geomagnetic field, and it causes upsets in the geomagnetic field. It's no longer uniform. It's been disturbed. We call this a geomagnetic storm. Okay. Now, this is a problem, of course, for our satellites that are up in outer space. It's a problem for the astronauts on the ISS, which is very close to Earth. And uh, all of these have to be built to withstand these various events. Okay, so the solar flux index is a measure of the sun's activity, as is the sunspot index, or a sunspot number. Okay, and then the A and K indices refer to what's happening here. So, for good propagation, here's what we want. We want lots of solar flux index because that charges up the ionosphere. And the, the more charged the ionosphere, the better it can reflect uh, radio waves, and the muff goes up, so the maximum usable frequency goes up. It can, in good years, climb as high as 50, 60 megahertz. Okay. Uh, in bad years, it won't get more than, you know, may get up to 7 or 8 megahertz. Now, we want that, but we want it to be uniform, because if it is not uniform, it causes disturbances in the geomagnetic field. And the disturbance in the geomagnetic field hoses the ionosphere. So in spite of the high number, we can get a radio blackout. Now, if there is a radio blackout, I will point to you that when things go back to normal, the ionosphere goes through a period of intense ionization, which means propagation is fantastic fantastic for a day or two and then it settles back down to where it would normally be. Now you've got a little problem in that these measure the activity 
of the stuff coming to the earth. So if there's lots of this, you run the risk of the A and the K uh, indices. Now let me show you uh, some pictures from this article, if I may. This picture right here illustrates the muff. These are uh, going up in frequency. So that's lower frequencies reflected by the E region, the higher frequencies reflected by the F region, even higher frequencies above the muff go on into outer space, okay? Now the A and K indices which measure the uh, geomagnetic storm, here um, is the relationship between A and K. Uh, the A is a kind of a logarithmic index. K is something that can be averaged together. Okay? You can average them from different places around the Earth. Okay? And they go from quiet, which we like, to unsettled, to active, to minor storm, a major storm, severe storm, very major storm, very major storm. Now, as we are in the low part of the sunspot cycle, we're going to see stuff in the air. Okay? When you get higher in the sun, sunspot cycle, you start to get these storms. Uh, some years ago in Canada, there was something called the Carrington event. This was a very bad geomagnetic storm, very bad geomagnetic storm. And as I said, it plays havoc with the uh, ionosphere. Now one of the problems with the Carrington event was before we had all these electrical long lines, but we did have long telegraph lines. And the geomagnetic storm actually induced currents in those telegraph lines. So people were operating them without batteries, doing all kinds of things. They had strange things happening. So a very bad geomagnetic storm can be bad for infrastructure here on the Earth, the, the long transmission lines and so on, all of which are built to withstand an event like that. Okay, they will drop out. There are um, circuit breakers and stuff that will drop them out. Uh, it's also bad for satellites, um, but uh, they're built for that now too. They're built to withstand the extra radiation that uh, hits them when there's a geomagnetic storm. So, to summarize what we have looked at, the solar flux index is a measurement of the sun's energy at 10.7 centimeter wavelength, about 2.8 gigahertz frequency. Okay, the sunspot number is a number that represents the total area of the sunspots into sunspot equivalents, I guess, okay? And then there is the uh, A and K indices. One is logarithmic, the other is more linear and can be used for averaging purposes. They refer to the same thing, which is the amount of activity in the Earth's geomagnetic field. If the solar flux index and the sunspot numbers are high, that's good for HF. Very good, we're looking forward to that. But if there's a burble where the radiation coming off the, the sun, the solar wind, um, is non-uniform, it can cause things to happen inside the Earth's geomagnetic field, which can create a radio blackout. So the same conditions that are good for HF are sometimes bad for radio blackouts. Radio blackouts rarely last more than a few days, and usually more like a day, okay? And then it all comes roaring back. So I hope that helps. All right, please take a look at dkassler.com slash support for various ways that you can uh, help fund this channel. And until we next meet, 73.